Hello, uh, I'd like to pose a rhetorical question uh, before I start. Um, what would you think uh, of a guy who, he worked for a rich guy, and the two of them, they went off into the wilderness together. And this guy came back alone with the guy's car keys, uh, his wallet, bank accounts, deed to the house. He just basically just took over where that guy left off and was even doubly better off because the guy's not around. And, you know, his clothes were all torn and and he was claiming that the guy was whisked away in a flying saucer and will never be seen again. So don't look for him because he's not on Earth anymore. Not even in the Earth anymore. Would that be an X-File? Or would that be uh, more of a episode of CSI? I I asked that question a long time ago, and it it didn't go over very well. I'm just going to pose it simply. Um, tell me if you hear anything suspicious between the lines here. First uh, Kings, uh, chapter nineteen. Yeah, let's start at verse fifteen and just read on. Um, Elijah's hiding uh, in a cave on Mount Horeb where Moses got the laws uh, because he's in fear of his life again. Seems even worse this time. And he hears a voice. Uh, go, Yahweh said. Go back the way. Uh, go back the way to the desert of Damascus. You must go and anoint Hazel, king of Aram. You must anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, uh, as king of Israel, and anoint Elisha son of Shamphat, as of Abel uh, Mihola, as prophet to succeed you. Anyone who escapes the sword of Hazil will be put to death by Jehu. Anyone who escapes the sword of Jehu will be put to death by Elisha. But I shall spare 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bent before Baal, all the mouths that have not kissed him. Wonder how Elijah took that news. I mean, not exactly the, not exactly the life uh, preserver that he was hoping to get thrown his way. I guess, basically, uh, you're done. Let's find a new one. This old mule's had it. Uh, yeah, so same same chapter, next verse, nineteen. Uh, leaving there, he came on Elisha, son of Shamphat, as he was plowing, behind. Uh, twelve yoke of oxen, he himself being with the twelfth. Elijah passed near to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me go kiss my father and mother, then I will follow you, he said. And here's the strange part. Elijah answered, Go, go back, for have I done anything to you? That's a strange answer. Seems a little intimidated by this. I mean, if uh, he's Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, he's Luke Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> must be a big, scary guy. Uh, Alicia turned away and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He used the oxen's tackle for cooking the meat, uh, which he gave to the people to eat. He then rose and, following Elijah, became his servant. And that's the last we hear of him in the first book of uh, Kings. And um, Elijah is still a busy guy. He just doesn't have his disciple with him anymore. I don't know if he, you know, entrusted him uh, to a subordinate or maybe he just thought he was annoying. Um, anyway, uh, we next hear of uh, Elisha in Second Kings, the, uh, the second chapter, just in time to say goodbye, you know and have the torch passed to him. Now this, I see some suspicious stuff between the lines. What do you think? I'll just read it through. This is what happened when Elijah, oh wait, this is what happened when Yahweh took Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha set out for Gigal, and Yahweh, uh, Elijah said to Elisha, You stay here, for Yahweh is only sending me to Bethel. But Elisha replied, 
As Yahweh lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you! Exclamation point. And they went down to Bethel. The Brotherhood of the Prophets, leaving behind, uh, living at Bethel, came out to meet Elisha and said, Do you know that Yahweh will carry your Lord and Master away today? Yes, I know, he said. Be quiet. Elijah said to Elisha, You stay here. Yahweh is only sending me to Jericho. But he replied, As Yahweh lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you! Exclamation point. And they went on to Jericho. The Brotherhood of Prophets living at Jericho went up to Elisha and said, Do you know that Yahweh will carry your Lord and Master away today? Yes, I know, he said. Be quiet. Elijah said, Elisha, you stay here. Yahweh is only sending me to the Jordan. But he replied, As Yahweh lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And they went on together. Sounds like he's trying to ditch him. And it sounds like uh, Elisha is hip to this. And there's a little, he's getting a little clingy, a little needy. Fifty of, the brotherhood of the Fifty of the Brotherhood of Prophets followed them, halting some distance away as the two of them stood beside the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water, and the water divided left and right, and the two of them crossed over dry shod. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Make your request. What can I do for you before I am snatched away from you? Elisha replied, Let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Double share of your spirit. Your request is difficult, Elijah said. If you see me while I am being snatched away from you, it will be as you ask. If not, it will not be so. Now, as they walked, as they walked on, talking as they went, a chariot of fire appeared and horses of fire coming between the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw it, and he shouted, My father, my father, my father, chariot of Israel and its chargers. Then he lost sight of him, and taking hold of his own clothes, he tore them in half. And he picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen, and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He then took Elijah's cloak and struck the water. Where is Yahweh, the God of Elijah? he cried. As he struck the water, it divided right and left, and Elisha crossed over. The brotherhood of the prophets saw him in the distance and said, the, pro the spirit of Elijah has come to rest on Elisha. They went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look, they said, your servants have fifty strong men with them. Let them go and look for your master. The spirit of Yahweh may have taken him up and thrown him down on a mountain or into a valley. Send no one, he replied. But they so shamed him with their insistence that he consented. So they sent fifty men who searched for three days without finding him. They came back to Elisha, who had stayed at Jericho. He said, Didn't I tell you not to go? Uh, same chapter, uh, verse 23. So now Elisha's top dog, and he's heading up to uh, tell everybody about him being now in charge. Uh, from there he went up to Bethel, and while he was on the road, some small boys came out of the town and jeered at him. Hurry up, Baldy, they shouted. Come on up, Baldy. He turned round and looked at them, and he cursed them in the name of Yahweh. And two bears came up out of the forest and savaged forty-two of the boys. From there he went to Mount Carmel and then returned to Samaria. So what do you think? Uh, X-File or CSI? That question didn't go over very well when I asked it. Uh, <laughs> As a nine-year-old. It just... It, <laughs> it doesn't make sense that anyone bought that. It sounds like they didn't buy it either. 
I mean, they, they searched. He just... It's a fucking miracle. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, there you have it. Another conspiracy theory. <laughs>